Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for yet another video. Today we will be continuing through our clears of the Infinity Rifts. As you know from our previous installments in the series, we are just about done with the Psy Rifts and these Rifts we will be finishing out with the final three that are remaining which are indicated here by this map. So if you are enjoying the series, if you're excited about new installments that will be coming your way for other upcoming rifts and all other future videos, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button as that greatly helps me out. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the three rifts we have planned for today. Now the first rift on our docket is the Luke Cage solo rift, which is interesting enough if you've experienced other rifts of the solo type. In great contrast to a lot of the other gameplay that's available here, we are limited to using one single hero, and in this particular one, it is for Luke Cage. Now, just getting the basic clear does get you Luke's alternate costume, which we will have a look at at the end of the video. But if you're looking for the full three-star clear, there's a couple of parameters that you need to keep in mind. The first is dealing 400,000 or more damage with abilities, which isn't super difficult as long as you focus most of your abilities on taking down some of the larger groups of enemies that you do fight throughout this challenge. But the more pressing, at least for me, was getting the clear in the 4 minutes and 20 second time frame. So that's the run that I'll go ahead and show you so you can plan your run accordingly. After all, you can run these as many times and you don't need to get the clears all in the same circumstances in order to get the three star requirement. So you can run through and get uh, retry your damage run as many times as you need to. And that's exactly what I did. So let's have a look at that four minute and 20 second clear. So you do start off with the different prison areas of the raft that you need to fight through which generally it's a lot easier because you have a lot of your other teammates helping you to burn down these enemies and these characters so in this particular area you do have to burn through the 18 different prisoners in order to get the clear and to move on to the next section but as long as you focus them down one by one you should be able to rip through them pretty easily once you've cleared them out this gate will automatically open on its own and you can go over to your left and discover that box and maybe hopefully regain some health or some mp if you need to but we're looking for time so we're going to blitz past all of those options and on into the second gate now hitting this gate does trigger the second part of this fight, which is very similar to the one that we had already cleared out previously, but this time there will be 33 characters, including some mighty characters with those stagger bars that you need to deplete in order to fully take advantage of the fights here. Now, I found it best if you focus a few light attacks and then rotate in a special attack or two, just because that does tend to be pretty efficient at getting through these characters in a timely manner. Now, most of the attacks that I choose to focus on with Luke are his attack where he rushes forward, and you can charge that up a little bit. As you can see there, we completely depleted the stagger bar of this mighty enemy here. But we also use the flurry of blows as well, as that burns through a lot of the MP or the stagger bar, I should say, as well as the health of the different enemies that we come in contact with. We have here our third and final wave of characters, and I just wanted to go ahead and get as many of them taken down as possible. So we did go ahead and use our ultimate or an extreme attack there to burn through the remainder of them. But we should have the last couple of mighty enemies taken out with this collection of attacks. Now the nice thing about facing off about the mighty enemies as you can see, they do tend to drop either full pools of MP replenish or even some health replenish as well. But we're looking for that time and that speed clear again, so we will be blitzing right past through here and on to the final segment, which is the Sandman boss fight. Now this would be quite an intimidating fight if you were to do it with one character in and of its own under the normal circumstances but 
due to the fact that this is a fight that is intended to be taken down by multiple characters all together, you do notice that we are dealing a significantly increased amount of damage to Sandman as we target him with these cannon, concrete suppression cannons as well as our standard attacks and our special attacks that we use against him as well. Honestly, the best thing that I found for burning down Sandman efficiently was just to deplete your MP gauge completely on him, and you'll see that we've got him down to about half health. Now, we do regain our MP a little bit quicker as we attack through the different grunts that spawn in here. So by the time we have these grunts finished and taken down, we will have more than enough of our health and our MP replenished to go ahead and finish the takedown of Sandman. Now at this point, I'm more concerned for time, so I'm not choosing to focus on these enemies too directly. So we go back over to our concrete suppression cannon, we knock down Sandman, and then we just walk over to him and unleash our flurry of blows to take down the rest of him. There's more enemies that pop in, more grunts, but at this point, we've got everything that we need to get that 4 minute and 20 second takedown, which gives us the 3 star clear condition for this fight. The second fight that we'll be having a look at today is the other solo rift that is available inside these Psy rifts. This one is centered around Gamora. Now Gamora is an interesting character because she primarily deals damage in a melee based combat but she is nimble, moves around pretty quickly, and one of her alternate abilities does allow her the luxury of some ranged projectiles as well. So for this fight, again, you just need to get the clear in order to unlock the alternate costume for Gamora, but if you're looking for that 3 star clear, then you will need to not only get the, the clear, but you'll want to get it in 3 minutes or less, as well as focus on taking 10,000 damage or less during the course of this fight. Now, you may remember a similar mechanic to this present from the Captain America fight in the Gamma Rifts that we've already gone through and completely cleared out. So I will be showcasing how, or the best strategy that I found to minimizing your damage and getting the clear condition on that final star. So you'll notice this is the fight that we familiarize ourselves right off the bat of the main story with a ton of grunts and Nebula sitting in the middle, dishing out damage pretty succinctly. Now, I decided that my best way to minimize damage was going to be running around the outside of the circle and knocking down as many of these grunts as possible. Now, yes, they do have blaster fire, and I've by no means gotten away unscathed during the course of this fight, but you will notice that the blaster fire that is issued by the grunts is pretty trivial, and you do have some margin for error, so I'm focusing on taking them down as quickly as possible to minimize any unnecessary damage I might take when it finally comes time to focusing down Nebula and getting the rush completely figured out. Now at this point, I'm focusing on a couple of uppercut heavy attacks as well as some aerial attacks as I fall and come back down. I check my progress here and as you saw, I'm at about a third of the overall damage allowed on this challenge, so I'm not super concerned, especially where I have all of the grunts basically taken out at this point. There's just one final one that we need to finish out before it's just Nebula. Now, with all of the grunts taken down, you do just need to focus on taking down Nebula. I'm using these upper strikes to help burn down Nebula's stagger bar a bit quicker, and we can even deal a decent amount of damage through Nebula's stagger bar as we crash down on top of her. As a matter of fact, about the time that we have her stagger bar depleted, we will have gotten her health down to the threshold to trigger the second part of this fight. We check again our damage just to make sure that we're still doing okay. We've about doubled the damage we've taken, but that gives us a roughly 4,000 damage of excess that we are allotted. And the best way that I've found to minimize that damage is Nebula generally attacks in sequences of three. So if you wait for that third and final sequence to finish, you can loop around here and get a couple of hits in from the backside. 
Now, you have also noticed that Nebula will occasionally switch over to one of her more ranged attacks, but she can only target in about a 180 degree field of vision from when she starts that attack. So if you dip back behind her, you can minimize the attack damage that you're taking. And you can see that employed by that check-in that we did with our damage where we've accrued maybe 500 additional damage than what we had before. Now, Nebula is just about down to her last 20 or 30 percent. We get her stagger bar down to drop her overall health quite a bit more. Now, we did take a glancing blow from her blaster fire there, but at the end of the day, we've still got a nice little cushion to take into consideration before we actually need to be too concerned about the damage we're taking. Here, where Nebula is charging up her electric attack, I backpedal and use that ranged blaster attack, as that is quite efficient at nipping down the remainder of her health, and we finally have our last opening to swoop in and clear her out with taking less than that damage cap and getting us the three star clear. Now the third and final rift that we'll be having a look at today is the rift which is required to unlock Magneto. This is a level 38 boss wave rift. And it's not super difficult in terms of getting the basic clear. Uh, you can really burn through that quite simply. Um, Claw is definitely the most annoying of these bosses to deal with and he is the one that starts off at, at right off the top. So you do want to keep that in mind. Especially because as a part of getting this three-star clear, you cannot have any team members incapacitated during the extent of the entire fight, which is quite the undertaking because Claw not only hits pretty hard, but he's also all over the place and he's highly mobile with not only his positioning, but his attacks as well. Getting the, five, the, the clear in five minutes or less isn't super difficult. Um, so I will be showing the no teammates incapacitated run that I had, which just so happens to be within that five minute time constraint as well. Now, the best strategy that I found for taking down Claw is actually to use Gambit and his deadly deal to burst down as much of Claw's stagger bar immediately or right off the bat as we can. We do go ahead and get down some deadly ground with Gambit here just because that deals some consistent damage onto Claw. And you'll see here that we've got him down to about his 40 or 45 percent of his maximum health, which is quite beneficial for getting him taken out in that five minute parameter, along with Kingpin and Doctor Strange, who are the second bosses that show up as a part of this challenge. I've depleted most of, if not all, of Gambit's attacking MP, so I do switch over to Wolverine, mainly because he has a little bit more forgiveness as a part of his kit where he does have a passive regeneration, and also that adamantium uppercut does wonders for damage dealt. As you saw there, it completely finished out what was left of Claw's stagger and health pool. Kingpin is the next opponent that shows up, and I haven't used Thanos, and he hits decently hard, so I have gone ahead and switched over to using him in order to burn down the first section of Kingpin's health, which gets us about a 15 to 20% off the top of his base health here. Now Kingpin does hit pretty hard, but Thanos is a very tanky character, and you unlock him at level 80, so he's got quite a bit of room for a margin of error as well. So I don't feel too bad about getting knocked over or punched in the face too many times by Kingpin. At this point, we're using one of Thanos' laser attacks to chisel through some of his health and his stagger bar, which is a decent zoning tool. It's not the most efficient move in Thanos' kit, but it does the trick. Just before Kingpin gets off his second attack there, we do knock him into his stagger phase, which saves my team some unnecessary damage. At this point, I need to switch back over to Gambit, mainly because he's not doing so hot health-wise. I want to pick up a couple of these health pockets laying around the room as well as see what we can do to burn down the remainder of Kingpin's health as he's down to about that 20 or 15 percent mark. We switch over to Miles Morales because his health is looking quite a bit better and with Electro Webs and the Venom Shocks we are able to deal a very high amount of damage output to Kingpin which takes him down. 
Now the last opponent that shows up is Doctor Strange, and you'll notice at this point I have all of my extreme attacks online, so my main priority is get Doctor Strange through his stagger bar so we can unleash mayhem with all of the characters on our team. Now that Doctor Strange is staggered, we have the extreme attack triggered for Wolverine and Thanos. Miles, we have to break through from the Bands of Sidorak, but we do that and bring in Gambit for the final killing blow. And that gives us this clear without losing a single team member, which nets us the three stars. Now that gives us the five star, or all clears on all five of those different quests. So I wanted to take a moment to showcase the different alternate costumes that you unlock through clearing out the Psy Rift. And we will show them to you all at the same time because that's efficient. First off, in the top left-hand corner here, the first costume that you unlock is the alternate costume for Miss Marvel Kamala Khan, and it's a pink-accented version of her costume, which is quite nice. The second, which you unlock by getting those three-star clears or accumulating stars, is this outfit for Spider-Gwen, which is one of my favorite outfits with her because it has such a nice color contrast with her standard outfit. The third outfit that we get by getting all the stars cleared out of this rift is this alternate costume for Iron Man, which is a sleek black armor and actually looks really cool. The fourth costume that we gain, this is the one from clearing out Luke Cage's solo mission. It substitutes his yellow outfit for a darker gray and a darker uh, black or blue jeans as well. And the fifth and final outfit that we gain is this dark Outrider type uh, outfit for Gamora and this is another one that I just really like and will switch into and use quite frequently. But with that being said, that is all 51 stars cleared from the Psy Rifts. If you've missed any of my previous videos, please feel free to go back and check them out. I will be putting all of these three star clear targets in a playlist for your enjoyment or for you to go back through and peruse if you're struggling on one of those rifts or another. We'll be back next week with uh, the continuation of this series as we go through the standard rifts. There is one more, and if I'm not mistaken, it's the Lambda rifts before we move forward into some of the more difficult ones. So if again, if you're enjoying the content, please feel free to leave a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day. Mm -hmm.